Now let's turn things over to the Big Picture Politics panel. Joining me tonight are Neil Asbury, uh, entrepreneur and host of the Truth for America radio show, Kay Steiger, managing editor at Raw Story, and Neil McCabe, conservative commentator and editor of the Guns and Patriots newsletter. And thank you all for joining me. Hey, Tom. Great to have you with us. Um, the Boston attacks have reignited the whole debate over counterterrorism. Um, shouldn't they, in, in a way, also, isn't this meta to the gun control debate, particularly since there is this thing called a tagant, which would allow us to know where the explosive in the original uh, uh, tea kettle, you know, there were pressure cooker pressure bombs, cooker. thank you, um, uh, came from, you know, that there would have been a, a chain of custody. Uh, going back to the 80s, this is not new technology. It's not a big deal. It's a small thing. It's, it's already done with plastic explosives. And um, the NRA lobbied against it repeatedly and every single time they won. Kay, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I think we've seen uh, this happen a lot. Um, you know, gun, uh, gun groups, um, pro-gun groups, I should say, um, are really good at sort of knocking down these regulations that may not seem like a big deal at the time, but end up having really big effects. pro-bomber regulations? I mean, you th you, you've seen it happen with uh, domestic violence um, as well. You know, um, state by state, um, the NRA and other gun groups make it, you know, try to knock down regulations that would make it harder for a users to own guns. And I find that really disturbing. I think it's um, one of those things where you really have to think about, um, you know, the elimination of this regulation, you know, in the, in, in the, you have to balance it with privacy, of course. But I think that what we're really finding is that these, these knocking down of things that don't seem like a big deal at the time can end up having a big effect, you know, as we saw with, with Boston. Right. Tom, Neil, has, has, has the NRA become the official bombers uh, oh, lobby? Uh, oh, that's, that's such an exaggeration. Let's be clear. Well, how the, is, the, it, the how is it not true? But the, but the terrorists, how is it not the, true? but they got their guns in their, in their explosives illegally. How so is what, it not what, true? But what would have made a difference? Because they got it all illegally. You know, they, they went outside the system. So what are we going to do? Penalize law-abiding Americans because what these guys... Made a difference? Differences we could have known laws, immediately have the laws who anyway. bought that gunpowder and where. Mm -hmm. it, but it had more to do with um, what the police were, what kind of information the police it, were allowed to hold it on would to. It unfortunately and for how long. have had an impact on this terrible, terrorist, terrible, heinous crime. It, it, we're, we're comparing apples and oranges, unfortunately. I, uh, what, and the, uh, the other Neil? <laughs> the um, <laughs> two Neils here. One of the things, oh, right. one of the things uh, Tom, you have to be aware of. Let, is me, that, let me just toss one thing in here. No, no, you've tossed I, a lot of things. Let me just get okay. to this All point, right, okay? The fact of the matter is a lot of this, uh, there's, a, there's a huge sort of subculture in the gun owning community of making your own ammunition. And this is a hobby, this is a business. It's something that's becoming a bigger, bigger part of gun owners' lives because uh, ammunition is so expensive now. And so what the NRA was trying to do is it was sort of trying to keep this sort of registry or tracking of people who make their own ammunition. You now, know that's nonsense, Neil. It's not nonsense. The, the, I just said it. You, no, Why well, would I deliberately say nonsense? Be, be, uh, I, I, probably because you I read mean, it in an NRA document. But the but fact you just of the matter said that is, the NRA is supporting that, bombers that, and terrorists. That, so that, that's if I want to, if I want to, if I want to load my own shells, if yes. I want to load my own ammunition, and I buy gunpowder from a company, whether it's over the internet or whether it's the gun shop down the, sheet, down the street, it will have a tagant associated with it, which will identify it. I don't see it. I don't know it. It doesn't cause any problems for me. Um, it could easily be done. There's no re you know, the, the, the idea of people, you know, filling their own shells is no, I mean, that, that, I'm that, expressing that, to you the exact part. concern. You asked what the problem is. And I just told you well, what that the was. The, that's, that's, the excuse. Excuse. that's not a problem. But, Tom, but it's, and, it's part and, of the bigger issue, which is the federal registry. And, there is and no creating, federal registry. But that's what they want. That's what the end result of all of this is. And who's going to run that federal registry? And, and Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, Barack Obama? It's a non starter. It's not going to happen. There is already. You don't have the votes. There is already. Votes already votes for this. Neil, I can sell you a list tomorrow morning of, of ten, hundreds of thousands of gun owners in the United States, right down to the detail of the kind of guns they own. I can sell you that list. It's available. You know who's, who I'd buy it from if I was going to sell it to you? The NRA. 
Well, uh, let, let's face it, that we've already had this debate and it didn't win. I mean, even you don't have the Democrat What's so votes wrong for with it. this? You don't have Democrat votes for it because this is a war by the liberal elite on rural America. This has got nothing. To, this first is. of all, there is this no is liberal war. elite. There's on, a conservative on, on, elite. You got a bunch of billionaires up there talking, who are buying legislation and who are about, buying senators and who are buying members of the House. The American Legislative Exchange Council. Alex, you've got you've got billionaires putting money into the Tea Party. I mean, there is a conservative elite in this country. The, uh, my God, I uh, wish uh, there was a liberal elite. For 10 there years, is so the idea that there's no liberal elite is absurd. There, I, there I, might I be there might be some them. liberals who are <laughs> smart, but there's, <laughs> there's not much. there's not a liberal <laughs> elite. Kay, you wanted to. Well, I, I just think um, you know I think I agree with you that having uh, something that's traceable in a gunpowder just to see um, it should a crime happen. I mean I guess that's that's what that I find so confusing about this. But Kay, what would it have changed? They would, might have the been able to find them quicker. The, Quicker than what? A day, we, two we, days? We would have known in a matter of hours where that gunpowder came from. That would have done what? Well, uh, <laughs> it may well have led two, back to a receipt in a store, you know? It's, I mean, I mean uh, in addition to that, this is, I mean, there's just bizarre stuff. If you have a gun store and it goes out of business, the federal government is not allowed to keep the government, the, the information, the fine. Now, this is registered the gun dealers. private information. The, the, no, this is registered gun dealers. They're, they're already you know, putting that information into, that, into your god-awful database. Mm -hmm. The federal government, they, according to this, you know, this T-Hart amendment, you know, this, this toady for the NRA, um, the, if, a, if a store goes out of business, instead of putting that information into an electronic database that could be easily searched by the FBI, that information has to go into a physical warehouse in a physical building in Washington, D.C., or outside of Washington, D.C., where a physical person has to spend days going through microfilm to find it. And there's no sense to this whatsoever except to make it hard for the ATF. The, the, thing, that I, the thing that I find so funny about all of this, and if you can call it funny, I guess, is that um, you, know, you have folks who are so opposed to a gun ownership database, and yet these are the same people who are completely okay with signing over a lot of other civil li civil liberties after 9/11, you know, checking into library records and all kinds of online tracking. So I guess I don't understand why um, we're okay with that invasion but, of but, privacy, but, but not why, the invasion of privacy that could the, solve crime. The places with the most strictest gun laws have the highest crime rates. That's not why, true. Why, well, Chicago, take a look what's happening in Chicago. That's not true. Chicago's look, crime look, rate look, is actually going down. What's happening in rural America, where all these guns, where all these guns are, we don't have those problems in rural America. Uh, that's well, not true either. In, well, in rural America, you, well, have, you have one of the highest the gun suicide rates, one of the highest gun accident rates. Take a look at take a, take a, Tom, Chicago. We can't deny what's happening in Chicago. The biggest predictor of gun violence is gun proliferation. It's that simple. Where you've got more guns, you've got more gun violence. Tom, you know, th this is an, ins ins an insincere debate. You know, I don't own a gun. I don't like guns. Full disclosure. But if it was a sincere debate, why aren't we going after the culture of violence? Why aren't we going after the movies, the video games, and the music? Because, <laughs> those, those, <laughs> because, because it's a know, First Amendment well, right that the liberals cherish. The Japanese and the Europeans, right the Japanese the and the Europeans watch more of our movies than we do on a per capita basis, and they're right. not shooting up their schools. In this country. It is not. That's the a, that's, same way that, that you believe guns are treating that violence. the NRA is putting out there to avoid their own and industry. The reason, there's a but, distrust among gun owners that needs to be addressed. And it's a distrust that is being fed in with lies and misinformation, well, then, with viral emails, that with more love. often than conquer not, with communication, that, conquer that with more trust, often than not have even a racial undertone to them. And you know that's this. That's wicked unfair. It is. That's you, wicked unfair. You have seen these, Neil. You know what I'm talking about. From from the things that are, that are talking about that black man in the White House who's coming to get your 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 oh, your that's, guns. That's, that's so all the, to all the emails. Tom. I would have met those I, guys. I by would now. I would I would have met those guys. You don't get the same right wing emails that I get. These these viral yes, emails. The, monster, the black guy who's gonna white, rape your white wife and you gotta get it. I do not that's get so, those. That's so passe. Come on, our country is better than that, Tom. If our, our country, country was better than, than that, that, then we would have passed. A simple background check. Maybe. There, there our, was not a simple background check. Our country elected the first huge, African American bill. president. Our country is better than that. Well, good step one. Okay, and, and a good segue. The West Chemical Fertilizer Company in West Texas, and this is not the western part of Texas, this little town called West Texas, has not been inspected since 1985. They, they, uh, they were fined in 2006 by the EPA. Um, isn't this? And by the way, they had 1,350 times, that's what, 13,000%? Something like, I can't do math on my fast. Uh, the ammonium 
nitrate allowable, this is the stuff that Tim McVeigh used to blow up the McMurrah Federal Building, um, that was allowable without safety checks. Isn't this a, a reason why we need big government, Neil McCabe? I was at a hearing today with uh, Janet Napolitano, uh, who was asked this question um, by uh, Senator Landro. And uh, the fact is, this, this, uh, this factory wasn't even on their radar. And uh, they're basically they're going. Understaffed. Well, that could be. And they're be. understaffed because of Republicans be in Congress. There's just nobody over there. I bet you could find somebody. The, the, the overstaffed the, the, issue doesn't work with me, with the government. The, there are so few inspectors mess. in the state of Texas that it's an average of once every I mean, 67 years these factories. Having said yeah, that, the, 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 the material itself, from what I understand, is mm -hmm. the material itself is relatively safe for transportation and things like that. The problem is that when it becomes under pressure, and so that, and okay. that was... Okay, okay. Kate, Neil's argument basically, if I, can, if I can paraphrase it, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, was that, um, you know, the government missed this and, you know, bad on them or whatever, uh, if, if I may. Well, and, and I think that the final thing is that if they had private insurance, which they should have had, that the, uh, an insurance company would have that we could be paying them. these dead people. Okay, fine. So <laughs> doesn't, doesn't that, uh, Kay, doesn't that demonstrate the progressive argument, the, the, the liberal argument that we can't trust companies which are driven solely by the profit motive to always do the best thing. Yeah, I mean, I think Isn't I... Isn't that what Neil just said? I, I think I agree with you. We've seen that, that there's been a huge rollback in environmental regulations of all kinds um, in the past few decades. And that's, you know, a, a definitely a concerted effort on the part of, you know, those who favor deregulation. And, you know, it's all well and good to just trust that, um, you know, th that companies will do it themselves. But I think this really demonstrates that, that they can't. And, you know, they hadn't seen regulators there in, what was that, 30 so, years? So, yeah. I don't understand the difference, though, Kay. What is the difference between an EPA regulator and a guy who owns a factory? No one in that the factory... The guy who owns the factory nobody, is in it for a nobody, buck. Nobody, the EPA nobody, regulators try nobody, to keep the public safe. Nobody working at that factory wanted this to happen, right? Like the, the people who the worked there, the managers, there were managers there, there were workers there, there were technicians there. Well, They're whoever not, made this the, decision, no one in the EPA is whoever made this decision, I would bet, was else. not on site when this thing blew up. But Tom, Neil? But, but Tom, first of all, some state and federal regulators missed it. They just totally missed it. And they should lose their jobs. Again, uh, yeah, and, and we, by the way, the our people, government didn't do a people, good enough job, so we need more big government. No, no, Hashtag that's good argument. You already, no, you already have all the regulations on the books. And you have regulators. Well, we don't have enough people, have so enough we need a bigger government. And you have enough regulators, but they missed it. And they should be held accountable for that. They missed and it the back people, in 1987, and the, and the 85? People, and the people who own this plant also have to be held accountable. I mean, it's the outlier. We have more regulations on the books. It's costing our economy a trillion dollars a year already in we have productivity. 5, Thousand people a year in the United States die in the workplace. But a couple of people messed up, and they need to be held accountable. You know, I can't support this at all. It was a huge mistake. Both regulators and owners need to be held accountable. And if laws were broken, they need to be held accountable for that as well. Okay, more of tonight's politics break uh, panel after the break. Welcome back to tonight's politics panel. Joining me are Neil Asbury, Kate Steiger, and Neil McCabe. And welcome Good back. To see you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks to this country's out of whack immigration system, American hospitals are quietly deporting hundreds, maybe thousands, of illegal immigrants when they're unconscious. It's called medical repatriation. And it lets hospitals put patients on chartered international flights, often while they're still knocked out, back to their home countries. A recent report compiled by immigration advocacy groups concluded that at least 600 immigrants were removed over the last five years, though there were likely many more than that. I mean, these were just the reports. So unconscious hospital patients are being deported without consent from federal authorities or the court system by private corporations, in this case, healthcare corporations, hospital corporations, so they can increase the bottom line. <laughs> Hold on, you know, so, Tom, Neil. There's well, something. Well, there's first something of all, I think, I, I, think the, right. I think the hospital should be running our immigration system. In fact, I think that they should be running our borders as well. They seem to be doing a much better job than our federal government is. And uh, you have these permanent patients that we're talking yeah, about. I, I, you're, I, I, I no, assume we, you're joking because we're talking about no, deporting I'm, sick people. We're, we're talking about deporting people who are illegal immigrants who are costing our health care system injured and billions, sick and unconscious. billions of dollars that's being passed on to my employees 
employees and to your employees and higher premiums, uh, diminished services. That's a whole separate argument. We can debate how we should reinvent our health care system. But these hospitals are businesses, and we're, we're struggling. We're uh, strapping them with billions well, of dollars of isn't, expenses. Isn't that the problem, then? Shouldn't we go back, you know, before the Reagan era, mm -hmm. it was illegal to build a hospital on a for-profit basis. But shouldn't the federal government be All stepping in and doing something about it? All hospitals in the United States it? operated on a not-for-profit basis. We did not have a problem with cost containment in the United States. We did not have a problem with exploding health care costs because every hospital in the United States... Now we're States, talking national health care. And, 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 and now we have private for-profit hospitals. Bill Frist's daddy and we made have the three best billion in the world, dollars and we have flipping the best these companies. The People from all of the world come here to our clinics and our hospitals I wish to, it was to true, get Neil. better and I to wish get it, healthy I, again. I, I wish it was true, but we don't have the best... I'm sorry to burst your bubble. We don't have the best health care in the world, and we don't have well, the best outcomes We certainly outcomes won't in, in a, a five years and, from and now and with fact, Obamacare, walk it destroys into, them. In fact, if you walk into any modern hospital today, the machines you're going to see are made by Siemens and and Nokia and Mitsubishi they're made in Japan and they're made in Germany Kay your thoughts on this I mean I think this is um, one of those really unfortunate things that um, you know we had really hoped to see and, and I mean by we I mean a sort of lefty people who had hoped to see some kind of humane and, and universal system um, you know, the, the Affordable Care Act did not include undocumented immigrants. And this is a problem because hospitals who, um, you know, by law are, are mandated to treat these people have to sort of deal with these patients once they're here. So and these deportations are going to get worse when Obamacare kicks oh, in? Oh, absolutely. So, well, the hope is that hospitals will have the money to cover those people. But I think the, the, the sense is as long as we have 11 million people in this country who you know, it's it would be impossible to get rid of them overnight. You know, we need to integrate them into the into the country somehow. And you know, they're not going to stop going to hospitals just because we don't like that. You know, they came to the country in an illegal way. Um, you know, and I think the reason that we mandated that all hospitals have to cover anyone who wanders into their emergency room in the first place is because we think that it's really a humane thing to treat people when they come into the hospital and make sure that they get care when they're sick, whether or not they can pay. Right. This was done during the Reagan administration, by the yeah, way, with, exactly. with, the, uh, with the encouragement of Ronald Reagan. Um, Neil, well, I mean, isn't, point, isn't, Tom, isn't an easy solution to this to simply say, health care is a right and not a privilege? I and think then, that's involuntary you know, servitude if you're basically well, forcing people what, to work it's for what free. The other, you're forcing it's what people 33 to work for of the free. other 34 OECD countries But do. you're forcing people to work well, for by free. By saying something is a right instead of a privilege, you have a right in the United States to, to have police protection. That doesn't mean the police are slaves. Or, no, but they're paid. Defenders. They're paid and they've, <laughs> and they've sworn an oath. You know, We're not talking about but people how, but who, how are we pay I'm for talking, these are volunteers, these doctors and police have put themselves in a situation where they're doctors and police. Right. Uh, these so, these so, employees at this business. So do doc, doc, you're, talk, you're talking about doc, We're talking about people in hospitals. They I put think themselves that, there. So. I think that right. if you separate the sort of the legality of it, most nurses and doctors would care for someone who's sick on, on their own. They shouldn't be forced to do it. That's well, involuntary should they servitude. Be, should, be, should they be forced by their CEOs to take sick people out, put them on airplanes, and ship them off to third world countries? Well, I thought it was interesting when you said they were deported against their will, because I think everyone, virtually everyone's deported against well, their will. Well, they're de deported unconsciously. Yeah. Um, and, and it's unfortunate that they put themselves in this situation. It's unfortunate that, that somehow we're on the hook for a decision they made. They... They put these hospitals in that situation. They came to this country. They didn't look at the risks properly. I would hope I that they would be speak. cared for. I don't, I don't think think want ill on for all those people who came into this country. I don't wish, I don't wish ill and, on any and, of them. And certainly not for the children of you these certainly people. Don't understand, exactly. but you certainly don't understand. What about those who came here before they you, were even aware of what you, happened and they get sick if they have diabetes and they have an you don't un, You don't seem to understand the strain that is being put on the hospitals when people sure. just show up for this care. So, so let's we have some fix kind of that. Universal and tell, and tell me what you're really talking well, about. <laughs> what you're yeah, talking about is permanent patients. Called deportation. Let's, we should deport them ahead of time. What you're talking about is permanent patients okay. that need to be transferred well, to long-term care. Let's That's take what you're talking this from the, from the international debate and bring it home, OK? Here's a clip from um, uh, out of, uh, this is either LA or San Francisco. I uh, know it's from a Nevada, uh, well, I, I'm, 
KNTV. Here it is. <laughs> check, check this. From our cell phones. Dozens of mentally ill patients are being dropped off in the Bay Area. Tonight, San Francisco City Attorney launched an investigation. Published reports claim that Nevada's primary psychiatric hospital put about 1,500 patients on a bus and sent them out of town. About one third of those patients ended up here in California. NBC Bay. So that's the old Giuliani thing, where they wouldn't the, the police would round up the homeless and dump them in, uh, in New Brooklyn. Jersey. Yeah, oh, where? Yeah, uh, yeah. So we're not even talking about undocumented immigrants. Here. No, these we're are these are American about, citizens. You know, we're talking about American citizens who aren't insured, and this is unfortunately the really tragic reality of people in America who don't have health insurance. Yeah, and well, these are people that, that do have health care, but the cost of the health care is, is escalated. It's against the law. It's against, let's be clear, what they're doing is against the law, and it should then, not happen. And why but, aren't but, we seeing any but perp this, walks this of turned, rich white executives? This, this, this is about what's to come now with Obamacare. I mean, these hospitals and institutions are businesses, Tom. And Let's and, make them not businesses. But that's, let's well, go back to we pre already Reagan. had that debate, and it didn't, you lost that debate. We had an excellent health care system in the United States. The post office worked wonderfully for over 200 years until the Republicans got a hold of it during the Reagan administration. That debate privatized. has already been had, and, and, and unfortunately, it's not going to happen. It, it, it's kind of like the gun well, control why not? Thing. We can talk about it. We're just supposed to just, supposed to just roll happened. over because the Republican Party has been seized by a bunch of right-wing billionaires? Uh, socialized medicine will destroy our health care system in this country. That's why we won't have it. Like, it. like it destroyed that in 33 of the other 34 OECD countries that all we've have already, as a much country, better outcomes as a country, than us we've and much lower costs We don't want to be the U.K. We don't want to be Canada. We have not said that as a country. Some right-wing crazies in our country. No, no offense attempted. <laughs> have said that. But the majority of Americans, if you ask the majority of Americans, uh, well, good. Would you like a free sandwich? I, I, they I, say I, yes. I can say. I, 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 <laughs> um, but if you ask the majority of Americans, uh, just just the simple question: Should health care be a right and not a privilege in the United States? Over sixty percent say yes, and well, everything and else flows. Obamacare out of Obamacare is still incredibly unpopular in this country. Well, Obamacare doesn't even establish health care as a right and not a privilege. I mean, it's it's a step. It's a step in the right direction, but it's a baby step. A wise man called it a train wreck, Tom. don't really know what's in the Affordable Care Act, to be fair. Well, the man who designed it called it a train wreck. Which is a problem. We don't know what's in it. Then why did we vote for it? Yeah, I mean, if you ask people about the provisions in Obamacare, if you ask them, do you think that insurance companies should be barred from, you know, Denying you coverage because you have a pre-existing condition, people say yes, absolutely. You know, if you know, if the, if you ask if people should be allowed to stay on their parents' health plans until they're 25, they say yes, absolutely. These things are not unpopular. It's but, just that people have heard Obamacare and think it's scary. They never people ask. are asked, asked if they want to be mandated. They say overwhelmingly no. And when they which ask those socialized questions, medicine, hey, they never, not they never, medicine. you never say, and it will cost this much. And it will cost this much. You oh, never. We're going to be. We're going to go, like go, something we're gonna go in circles yes, on this one for hours. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me, if I may, uh, segue to another topic. In February, the Marketplace Fairness Act was introduced into both houses of Congress. This basically says that if you buy something on the internet, you have to pay the same sales tax as if you walked down the street and bought it from a local store. Local stores are having a big problem with this. People are walking into stores with their cell phones and clicking, and pop off it comes from Amazon or whatever. Um, Neil, you had some insights into this that you shared with me before we went on the air. Are you uh, willing and able to share that in short form with Well, Tom, with, with I may us. be violating a confidence, but uh, in this sort of clash of the titans, no, no need to. what you had is you had Amazon was bankrolling the Marketplace Fairness Act, the sort of the idea of nationalizing the collection of sales tax right. over the internet. Fighting that was eBay, bankrolling it was eBay. In, and they were basically the advocates for all of their thousands of resellers. Uh, eBay is basically taking a dive. And you'll, I'm not sure how it will operate in the House because there's still some this tax issues. The House doesn't always like the Senate making tax decisions, sure. though this isn't raising taxes. It's just enforcing taxes. But what you will see is you'll see the eBay advocacy will fall away and there's a very good chance it's going to pass in the Senate. So just to clarify this, um, right now, na nationwide, if you buy something on the internet and you don't pay sales, sales tax is not collected by the seller, you have a legal obligation to write a letter to your state 
at the end of the year as and say, a buyer. as a buyer, mm -hmm. and say, I bought $13.82 in aggregate worth of stuff, or, or this is how yeah. much tax I own, and here's my in check. And nobody does that, yeah. and so the states never see the money. Yeah. Billions of dollars is lost. And what this bill would do is it would say, as with retail stores, the sellers have to collect the money, even though it's the buyer who owes the money. The sellers have to collect the money. And and you're saying Amazon and eBay are well, going to start doing like this. With a, now, with a paper catalog, you would with this law, you would have a 40-page add-on with every municipality and state tax tacked on. Obviously, well, the, maybe or maybe not. Maybe it would just eBay be calculated when you make the call. eBay has developed a software program so, that they're going to sell to exploit well, this. But we have just a minute left, and I want to get to the larger sure. issue here, which is it seems to me that that if eBay and, and, and Amazon go along with this, it's going to make it more difficult for small oh, internet retailers. Oh, absolutely, Tom, and that's exactly it. Is that Doesn't one of the bright call spots? for breaking the bright, up the big companies? Isn't this a, another now, argument for the Sherman Act? One of the bright spots in our economy right now is our small internet businesses. I mean, the idea of a, of a stay-at-home mom or, or a disabled person being able to turn their kitchen table, a spared bedroom, a garage into a global business is one of the bright spots of our economy. Okay. Now what you're going to ask them, what you're going to ask them is that 45 states they have to collect tax for. My whole life, and she managed to collect sales tax and send it into the government. So I think online retailers will figure out a way to do I, it too. I, I think so too. And my guess is that the credit card companies the will The Supreme Court has already said it's service. illegal. You, they can't make them do it. Okay, we will see. Uh, <laughs> Neil, Kay, Neil, thank Good you to be very much. Thank you, Great Tom. to have you with us.